1944, we had the Normandy landing. In 2024, <laughs> we, had, we have the complete annihilation, <laughs> decimation of Norman Finkelstein by Alan Dershowitz on Piers Morgan, uncensored. But I want to get to the core point. What Thomas Finkelstein Bergenthal. finally Thomas says. Thomas wait a minute, Bergenthal, let me finish, the please. American let me finish. Let the me finish. Are illegal. When, what, Finkelstein, what, what Finkelstein is finally saying is that these people, he called them martyrs. I was at Beira. I was at the Nova Music Festival. I saw the remnants of where a woman uh, named Vivian Silver, a peacenik, who used to go over and bring Hamas and, 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 and Gazan people to hospitals, was burnt to death. I saw where people were raped. There is no justification for collective rape. There is no justification for murdering a peacenik. This woman was probably murdered by the very people she brought to hospitals because they knew exactly where she lived and where the hospitals. It's an abomination to even suggest that any kind of martyrdom, dispute over land, dispute over any, could justify what happened on October 7th. Shame on anybody who thinks that civilized human beings should be praised or even justified for doing what they did. I met a man whose son had been beheaded, and Hamas then took his head, brought it back to Gaza, put it on sale for $10,000, and this father had to bury his son without a head. That's what Hamas did. And not only Hamas, but people, ordinary civilians in Gaza, came over the border and participated in these rapes and murders. And shame on anybody who doesn't unequivocally condemn it. There is no justification for what happened on October 7th. No matter what the history is, the history is disputed. But I want to hear Norman Finkelstein say, unequivocally, no matter what the history is, there is no justification for the massacres of October okay. 7th. Well, we're gonna, it, we'll, we'll, we'll end with Norman Finkelstein's response and answer that question. My, that gives my a legitimate question. My, res my response is exactly the same one I gave you the very first time mm. I met you, Pierce. Mm. There were atrocities, large atrocities, that occurred on October 7th. I think it's indisputable. You then asked me, would you consider it terrorism? I then replied to you, I think atrocities denote terrorism. Mm -hmm. However, I said I take the same attitude towards the perpetrators of those atrocities as, I, as the abolitionists in the United States took towards the Nat Turner Rebellion. Nat Turner... So you justify them, so you praise them, so you Allow glorify them, and you honor them. That's Pierce, the reality. Pierce, 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 can I finish? Yeah. Can I finish? Yeah. Uh, Nat Turner and the slave revolt committed horrible atrocities. The ab abolitionists said horrible things happened, but they never condemned Nat Turner. No, they Nat don't Turner. happen. They what are they, perpetrated what they by did people. Was, You're justifying what they did was, Finkelstein, allow me to finish. this is the lowest point Pierce, you've ever please gotten tell them to, to stop. and you've gotten to low well, points, well, well, but this is the lowest Pierce, point you've gotten to, please, comparing these Pierce, rapists oh, please and these murderers to, well, I think, to I think abolitionists Alan, Alan, let him is finish. the lowest point in your uh, history. Let him finish what he's trying to say. Sure. Thank okay, you. Let me have By the, the way, word. Nat Turner's rebellion. Okay, in Nat Turner's rebellion, they committed horrible atrocities, including beheading babies. That's a fact. However, the and abolitionists. And you're justifying that. They did and you're not, justifying that. They did not. Please, Pierce, can you please tell him? To I think stop? let him finish the point he's making, and then then he responds. Okay. Thank you. Thank you okay. so much. However, the abolitionists did not condemn the perpetrators. The abolitionists kept saying, we told you so, we told you so, we told you so. If you treat people like that, what happened with the slave revolt inevitably would happen. And I say, if you lock two million people in a concentration camp for 20 years, half of whom are children, who were born into that concentration camp, don't react with shock and dismay and disbelief 
and indignation at what happened on October 7th. I have well, spent I the last react. 20 I, years, I, I have spent the last 20 years of my life studying what's been done to the people lying. of Gaza. And each time I reread what I wrote, I'm more, more firm than ever before. I will not condemn those people, even as I acknowledge that massive, unspeakable atrocities occurred on October 7th. Okay, Alan Dershowitz, your, let, your let final me response. Let my last point. Norman Finkelstein, you would not condemn the Nazis, Hitler, Goebbels, and Goering, because they, too, went through suffering after the end of the First World War. They, too, tried to justify what they did as inevitable because of the inflation, because of living under terrible conditions. They inevitably voted for Adolf Hitler. They inevitably built gas chambers. They inevitably built concentration camps. And you, Norman Finkelstein, who claim your parents are Holocaust survivors, you, Norman Finkelstein, by your logic, would justify every single one of the six billion Jews who were murdered because the Germans who did it don't deserve condemnation because they were victims of the Versailles Treaty at the end of the World War I. That's the situation you're in, Norman Finkelstein. It's despicable. Okay. Uh, well, we, well, we started, uh, I think, in a reasonable shape, and we ended in a place where the final word is despicable, which is a shame. But I understand that passions run high. I think you've both argued your case extremely eloquently and with great uh, verve. And I personally have sat and I've learned a lot, which is what I hope to do with these, in, with these debates. Everyone with the slightest intellectual objectivity, Finkelstein included, understood that this was the Arua Mat argument. This was the end of Norman Finkelstein's intellectual and moral credibility. Of course, radical leftists and Islamists might still dispute that. That's why I said anyone with the slightest intellectual objectivity. So, this was the end of Norman Finkelstein's career, essentially. Okay. But now, let's analyze what just happened. Thank okay, you. Let me By the, the way, Matt Turner's rebellion no, okay. In Nat Turner's rebellion, they committed horrible atrocities, including beheading babies. That's a fact. However, the abolitionists did not condemn the perpetrators. The abolitionists kept saying, we told you so. We told you so. We told you so. Although I also believe, and it's most probably true, that everyone can be a serial killer if certain conditions are met. For example, if, if the CIA takes me in a lab for a week, they can probably make me do unspeakable stuff. Okay, that makes sense. But no matter how I became a monster, I'm now a monster. And no matter the perpetrator, we can condemn the atrocities. So Hamas are now sick monsters, and they must be condemned together with the atrocities they did. Also, no matter how they became monsters, now the world needs to get rid of them. Second error in Norman Finkelstein, moral rationale, is that he dismisses completely the radicalization aspect behind the reasons why Hamas became monsters. In fact, because we have the, ex the examples and the experience, radical Islamists from a variety of socioeconomic circumstances doing similar atrocities, we can confidently conclude that radical Islamic ideology is the primary reason for them becoming monsters and not grievances. Comparing Hamas with the struggle of slaves in America is a moral and rational abomination okay. from the side of Norman Finkelstein. The black people in America were not radical ideologues who wanted to exterminate the whites for a last cause. 
This analogy is an abomination. Black people in America had a true liberation and humanitarian struggle. Given that Norman Finkelstein that deals with this issue for so long, for 40 or 50 years, I believe, and he makes this kind of silly errors, okay, he's out of the game. Okay, for me, it's out. He's, he lost any credibility. Okay, if after 40 years, my friend, you cannot even understand the, the basics, one plus one equals two, then why should anyone take you seriously? Sorry, Norman, that was the end. Thank you.